welcome to today's session today's session is microservices with grpc and dotnet core myself sonu satras and i'm working as a cloud consultant and assistant manager technology in synergetics in this session we are going to see the grpc protocol grpc pattern and how we can build a microservices using grpc how it works and uh, how we can build microservices using the grpc and also we will see how to build dotnet uh, grpc applications for creating microservices grpc is an open source remote procedure call framework developed by google it is designed for high performance low latency and language agnostic communication between the applications because grpc is using binary uh, pattern for uh, exchanging the data it is highly uh, performant and uh, gives low latency and you can also implement this with a uh, different uh, uh, types of applications you can use it with uh, windows applications web applications even you can use this with the different uh, languages and frameworks you can uh, use grpc in dotnet uh, uh, java applications or you can use python to build the grpc applications or even node js or some other frameworks grpc is similar to http that it uh, follows the client server communication model and it uses a specific uh, data standard or data format called protobuf uh, as an interface for exchanging and serializing the data the communication is carried out through a strongly typed contracts defined using the proto protobuf so in the protobuf uh, file we need to define what are the different uh, uh, models model classes and operations and then we uh, build the implementations for those protobuf definitions it is supports both asynchronous and synchronous communication means when you create a method it can uh, use an asynchronous or synchronous communication pattern protobuf uh, is a method or it's a data standard you can say you typically is typically used to serialize your data so we are familiar with the data serializations like a json or xml but protobuf is an another standard or another format that you can use to uh, serialize your data it allows efficient and extensible serialization making it ideal for uh, use with a grpc so grpc is primarily using the protobuf for exchanging its data when you define the methods and the data we define that in using the protobuf standard protobuf defines the structure of the data and can be sent through sent and received through grpc channels so as i have mentioned we need to define the structure of our data and operations in the protobuf standard or protobuf format and then we need to create the implementation classes and the data which is uh, uh, which needs to be exchanged will be passed through the grpc channels 
It provides a simple and efficient way to encode structured data into compact binary format. As I have mentioned why it is uh, so performant because it uses the binary uh, format for exchanging the data. The protobuf serves as an interface description language for defining gRPC service contract. Inside the gRPC, we have to define the methods. What is the method name? What is the method of uh, syntax or return type? So those things we define inside the protobuf. And the protobuf also facilitates versioning, backward and forward compatibility and easy evolution of API. So now for building high performance APIs, we can use the protobuf and gRPC. If you see uh, a simple protobuf message contains a message definition, then scalar types and complex types. A message definition means the data structure that is defined inside the dot proto file. So we use a dot proto file which contains the message structure. So each message is simply just like a uh, class in object oriented programming languages like a person, student, account and so on. And inside this we need to define the uh, members of that particular message or that particular type and those types can be a scalar type or a complex type. Scalar type as we know it is uh, simply a string value or a integer float or boolean so these are the these are the scal scalar values we have but when it comes to complex types uh, messages uh, of type with a nested structure like a nested uh, list or array or it can be some uh, other complex types like a class object something like that so in the picture you can see there is a, a proto buff file which defines a person message type the so person type contains a name ID and emails uh, members so here the name and ID are uh, scalar types because it contains a string and a integer but when it comes to emails, it is uh, defined as repeated, which means it is going to create a list of uh, emails uh, and each email is of string type. And you can also define the order of those members by giving a number. So how the gRPC works? So gRPC client is uh, making request to the gRPC server. So what usually happens whenever the uh, gRPC client wants to make a request, it needs to first establish a connection with the gRPC service or gRPC server. So we will have a proxy service uh, or proxy object uh, available in the client. So later in the demo, I will show you how we can create the client and in the uh, client application, we use the proxy object or stub objects to make a request to the uh, server objects. So what happens when the client makes a request, the gRPC runtime understand that uh, uh, request and then sending that request through a transportation channel to the gRPC server. So the responsibility of the gRPC uh, transportation channel is to uh, transfer the data to the other endpoint that is the server endpoint. Once the server receives the request, it will be uh, decoding the request that is the, there is a gRPC runtime running on server also which is going to decode the request sent by the client and then understanding what is uh, done and then it makes uh, the, the, the execution of that particular request. So the 
uh, execution that happens in the uh, applications will be in the traditional languages like a uh, .NET or Java or Python and so on. Once the re response is generated by the server application, it uh, returns the data and then it is encoded back to the binary protobuf format and then send it through the transport channel back to the client. The client will receive that encoded message or serialize the message and then decode it back to the .NET or uh, Python application data object. gRPC services are defined using the protobuf and contains methods that can be called remotely. So, as we have mentioned, uh, every gRPC service that you define will be deployed inside a gRPC server and those methods or those functionalities can be invoked through uh, a protobuf uh, message. So, that means there is a uh, gRPC service. Uh, server and the client, the client is going to make a request in the encoded format and the server uh, receive the request execute uh, with the server application code and the server may connect to the uh, backend uh, applications or backend databases and return the response. Methods have methods can have input and output parameters defining using the protobuf message type. So in the previous example we saw it is uh, defining the members of the protobuf file and uh, uh, the service definition is the contract that both the server and client adhere to which means uh, whenever we create the server applications we define all the methods inside the server application and inside, inside the protobuf file which is uh, then used by the client application also to generate the corresponding client objects. Let us see how we can do error handling in gRPC applications. gRPC provides a comprehensive and structured approach for handling the errors. In gRPC applications, the errors are represented with status codes and messages. Like in RESTful applications, we use HTTP status code to represent the error uh, responses. Similarly, in gRPC also we use status codes and messages. The errors can occur on both client and server sides. So when we make a call from the client applications, it may get an error while connecting and uh, executing the services or in the si server side while uh, receiving the request and executing the request it may throw an error grpc uses status codes to represent the errors like http it is also using the status codes the status codes follow the HTTP status code convention but are more granular like uh, for representing the success we can say zero and for if the operation is cancelled we can say one for unknown exceptions we can say two and if you are giving some uh, bad request or arguments we can say it is uh, invalid argument which is uh, represented by three. GRPC allows you to attach additional error information as metadata. Like in WCF applications, the uh, message contract we use to uh, return extra error information. Similarly, we can also attach the um, error information as metadata in the GRPC response. The metadata can be added by the server to provide more context about the error uh, which is raised or which is occurred in the application. 
when you talk about the performance and scalability grpc is uh, designed for high performance or often uh, outperforming traditional http or restful services so comparing to the restful services grpc is very high performance because it uses the native binary encoding and connection oriented approach it supports features like a multiplexing and flow control enhancing the performance the binary serialization using protobuf leads to smaller message sizes and improving the efficiency as i have mentioned the protobuf uh, message structure uh, which is serialized in binary is uh, helping to reduce the size of the messages and uh, that's why it, it improved the efficiency in message exchange when we talk about the security grpc supports various security mechanisms such as uh, transport level security which in uh, http also we see the tls or ssl secu security the same is supported here as well and it allows the authentication and authorization to ensure secure communication between the services like the uh, http restful services the client can authenticate to make a request uh, uh, and the server will validate the client request before it execute the uh, request so grpc is an approach or a uh, pattern or practice that we use to build applications and it is a, a remote procedure call approach for uh, creating distributed applications or the client server applications so here we are going to see how we can use grpc for building microservices if you see here when we make a microservices application it helps us to uh, create uh, the entire application as a distributed application in which we can create different modules as independently deployable uh, packages or deployable applications so each module or each application can be developed using different languages maybe one can be you developed using java and the other can be developed using python and the other can be developed using dotnet or some other languages and since they are exposing an http rest endpoint we can uh, access them through an api gateway and the client will be making http rest calls to uh, the api gateway uh, for invoking the restful services but it is very important to understand that these services may sometimes needs to uh, communicate each other for exchanging the data maybe if you are going with an e-commerce application where we have the order service product service user service and uh, uh, payment service where the order service may sometimes need to talk to the product service or the user service wants to connect to uh, the payment service or the uh, basket service wants to connect to the order service so in that cases the inter service communication how you implement that's a question so we have the traditional communication patterns using uh, queue uh, the, the queues or uh, topics or we can use uh, events or means event sourcing or we can also use the traditional http based communication but considering all these communication patterns grpc is one of the best better choice for inter communication between the microservices because it is more faster and uh, performant while uh, connecting uh, two services so one service which is exposing as a grpc endpoint can be invoked from another client application so for building microservices wherever inter service communication is necessary we can use the grpc uh, as a communication pattern to to connect those services 
Direct synchronous HTTP calls for microservice to microservice communication. So if you see, when high volume of calls that invokes the direct HTTP calls to multiple microservices are not advisable because if one app service need to connect to multiple uh, so other microservices or one microservice needs to make uh, com make a call to other microservice multiple times it is not advisable to use the http for that because http is synchronous which uh, requires a response and means whenever you make a request it has to wait for the response to uh, comes from the server they can increase the latency and negatively impact the performance, scalability and availability of your system. So a long series of direct HTTP communication can lead to deep and complex chains of synchronous microservice calls. So uh, it is not advisable to use HTTP as an inter-service communication pattern uh, for microservices. Means if one service needs to connect to another service for uh, making a query or getting some data it's not advisable to use http the service aggregator pattern this pattern isolated an operation that makes a call to multiple backend microservices centralizing its logic into specialized microservice so the aggregator pattern it's uh, isolating the operation that makes the call to multiple uh, backend services. Means instead of making the calls to multiple backend services, from suppose if the service X wants to connect to uh, multiple backend services, uh, we can what we can do we can create a centralized uh, service or aggregator microservice which is going to uh, make a call to multiple backend services. So this is one way we can reduce the number of calls from one service to other services because in aggregator service uh, or aggregator pattern what we do the client is going to make a call to the aggregator service and it's the responsibility of the aggregator service to connect to multiple backend services. It includes the calls to several back backend microservices in sequenced order. Data from the workflow is aggregated and returned to the caller. So when the response comes from all the uh, backend uh, service calls, it aggregates the responses and send as a single response back to the uh, client or the client application. While it is still implements a direct HTTP calls, the aggregator microservice reduce direct dependencies among backend microservices. gRPC usage. <coughs> Synchronous backend microservice to microservice communication where an in immediate response is required to continue processing. So wherever we need a synchronous backend microservice communication is required. For example, if we are performing a, an order processing or an, an item is added to the database. So after the item is added to the database, we have to update many other services regarding the uh, updation of this uh, product. So for example, if I am adding a new product, we have to inform the notification service regarding that a new product type is added or new product is launched. So it has to send the notifications to the users. Or it may need to uh, send a notification to, uh, uh, or it may need to update the uh, order service uh, saying that the uh, product which was added into the cart but it was its a quantity was out of stock needs to uh, update its uh, state that is available so in such cases one service needs to communicate with other services synchronously we can use grpc polyglot environments that needs to support mixed programming pla platforms or low latency and high throughput communication where performance is critical. So we 
can use gRPC to uh, to increase the throughput and uh, lower the latency. Point to point real time communication scenarios we can use gRPC. So gRPC can push the messages in real time without polling and has excellent support for bidirectional streaming. So usually we use uh, event based uh, uh, communications for that but the problem is event based communication is unidirectional it's not bidirectional so in grpc it can be in real time as well as uh, it's a bidirectional network constrained environments binary grpc messages are always smaller than equivalent text based json message so when we consider the uh, REST API calls, it uses the JSON as the uh, payload structure or payload schema. So JSON is comparatively uh, higher or maybe larger than the binary gRPC messages. So we can also use uh, the service aggregator with gRPC instead of HTTP. So the aggregator receives a single request from the client, dispatches it to various microservices, aggregates the results and send them back to the requesting client. So instead of using HTTP, we can use the same aggregator service with the implementation of gRPC as the communication pattern. Such operations typically require synchronous communication as to produce uh, an immediate response and uh, backend calls from the aggregator can be performed using gRPC. Aggregator implements the gRPC client and, make, make, and it makes synchronous gRPC calls to backend microservices, each of which are, uh, implements a gRPC server. So that means the aggregator is acting as a gRPC client which makes request to multiple uh, backend microservices and this communication between the aggregator and the backend microservices will be a gRPC communication. So how we can implement gRPC with .NET Core? So .NET Core is providing a new project template for creating the gRPC application. So when you use Visual Studio or using the uh, CLI for creating the projects, you can see a gRPC project type. Similar to HTTP based frameworks, gRPC in .NET Core support middleware allowing developers to add custom behavior to the request and response pipelines, enabling features like logging, authentication and more. So if you are a .NET Core application developer, you must be familiar with the middleware concept available in ASP.NET Core applications. The same is supported by gRPC and it helps you to add uh, the functionalities like a logging, authentication and uh, many other uh, features. gRPC integrates seamlessly with the .NET Core dependency injection framework making it easy to manage and inject dependencies into your gRPC services. So like the other .NET applications, gRPC also supports uh, dependency injection. So the gRPC serv uh, server classes or client classes when you create, you can use the uh, dependency injection for integrating the services. To create a project, you can use the uh, gRPC project template and uh, you can use the .NET new gRPC command along with the project name to create the project. We have to define the service and the messages. Uh, you have to find uh, a protos folder containing the greeter.proto because if you are creating a uh, uh, gRPC project using the uh, command line or Visual Studio, it by default uh, creates a protos folder and inside the protos folder you will see a greeter.proto file. So if you want you can replace it with your own custom uh, uh, proto files and define your own service and messages using protocol buffers that is protobuf syntax. So like if you want you can uh, customize it and create your own 
type of uh, RPC, gRPC uh, implementations like services and the service will contain the methods and the message types. So generate the code from the dot proto file because when you create a gRPC kind of application it's not understandable to to .NET classes. So when you create a C sharp class, it will say that the service, the greeter service is not found, or maybe a hello service is not found because it is defined inside a proto file dot proto extension file. So if you want to make it understandable to C sharp applications, you have to compile that proto files and generate the code. So we can generate the C sharp output into a, uh, a particular folder and uh, you need to specify the plugin as uh, proto c gen grpc and specify the path to the grpc tools uh, location. For implementing the service logic, you have to create a uh, uh, class that is inherited from the generated service interface because when you um, uh, create or when you generate the code using the proto file it is going to create an interface and you have to implement that interface into a uh, C sharp class for example here you can see a greeter service dot CS is implemented uh, implementing the greeter service dot greeter service base interface and you can override or you can um, override those methods of uh, uh, that that particular uh, interface configure the grpc server so how we can configure the grpc server in the program.cs file as you see like a uh, uh, Configuring the web application, ASP.NET web applications, we can also configure the uh, gRPC server application. For that, we need to uh, specify inside the uh, program.cs main function. We, ha we have to specify the uh, configure web host defaults where we need to specify the configuration of the Kestrel and you need to specify the IP address and the port number. Uh, typically any port number you can specify and uh, you have to specify the listener uh, listen options dot protocols equal to HTTP protocols dot HTTP2 because it is not supporting HTTP2 by default so you have to explicitly enable the HTTP2 so then the uh, Kestrel will be uh, capable to listen the gRPC request we need to register the gRPC services and configure the endpoints in the startup.cs file so we can open the startup.cs file inside the configure services we need to call the add grpc function and in the configure method we need to use the grpc uh, endpoints so in the, in the use endpoint section we can specify endpoints dot map grpc service with the name of the grpc service class interoperability if you talk uh, the grpc allows interoperability between different platforms and programming languages so if you are creating uh, one microservice in uh, c sharp the other one can be implemented with a different language or framework so they can communicate each other because they uh, the grpc supports uh, multiple platforms and uh, languages so it's not mandatory that you have to build the client and server using the same language. It supports a wide range of languages including C++, Java, Python, Go, C Sharp and more. The interoperability is enabled by using the protobuf as a language agnostic data format. So how it is uh, being 
uh, interoperable because it uses the protob of file uh, like XML as a standard uh, file format or JSON as a standard file format. Protobuf is a language agnostic data format which is supports uh, different which is supported by different languages and platforms. Now let us see how we can implement or how we can create a simple gRPC application. Now let's understand how we can create a gRPC application using .NET. So let's open Visual Studio and then create a gRPC application. So what I'm going to create is uh, in an e-commerce application, assume that we have a catalog service, uh, which is a microservice, and that uh, is going to send a notification to the customers or to uh, the other services uh, whenever a new product is added to the database. So whenever a new product is added to the database, it immediately invokes a gRPC service, which is going to be a notifier service that is uh, used to send notifications to other services and users. So for that, let us go and create the ASP.NET Core gRPC service. So this is going to be the gRPC uh, server. So let me create this in uh, demos folder and I'm going to give the name of the service as notification grpc service. So this is going to be the project name sorry the notification and I'm selecting the framework version as 6 So when we create a new project, it comes with a greet.proto file and a service implementation, which is a greeter service. It uh, uh, creates the C -sharp class implementation for this greeter uh, gRPC service that is Inside the uh, proto file, you can see there is a service uh, definition that is greeter, and uh, this is the request and response structure for the greeting service. So, here you can see there is a say hello method which accepts a hello request and returns a hello reply. So, the hello request structure is defined here as a message, and hello reply is defined as another message. So, now we can create another uh, protobuf service or grpc service for that i can add a new item to the protos folder and you can search for protobuf and uh, visual studio is providing a proto protocol buffer file type and you can change the name as notifier dot proto <coughs> since you can see it is a notifier dot proto and the C sharp namespace is coming as notifier grpc service dot protos <coughs> but I want to make this as a base namespace only so i remove the dot protos <coughs> now you, i can define the service so before that i can 
define the package and the name of the package so since it is part of the e-commerce application so i'm just uh, giving the package name as e-commerce and i can define a service and the service name as uh, notifier which contains a grpc method that is going to be uh, notify so this is the notify method which accept a notification request message type and returns a uh, notification reply since uh, <coughs> it is it is using a notification request message and notification reply message we have to define those messages so we can go with message notification request and which contains a uh, string <coughs> message and also the list of services or users who wants to receive this message <coughs> then i can define the reply message message notification reply and here I can say a boolean uh, status or success status whether it is success or failure so I just uh, give one so here one and two indicates the uh, field numbers that is in the message uh, or in the request this will this will be the first field and this is going to be the second field and this is kind of list which is there can be multiple items or multiple receivers can be there so i created this as a list or repeated uh, list of string values and this is going to be a boolean value now we can save this and uh, add this proto uh, into the project definition as you see here already the greet dot proto is defined as a uh, server service and we have to define the same here we have to do the same for the notifier service dot proto now <clears throat> we can go and build the project so when I build the project, you can see it is succeeded. Now we need to add one package here, which is used to uh, create the uh, notifiers service base class from the proto file. So for that, we can go to the nuget package manager and then we can uh, search for grpc.tools and install this into the project. So you can see now it is installed here as a package and this is helping us to uh, build and create the notifier service based class so let's build the project okay you can see it is successfully compiled the project now inside the services folder we can create a new service class i can call it as notifier service or notification service
So this notification service is going to inherit from notifier dot notifier base. So since our uh, notification service is going to inherit from the notifier base, so notifier base is a auto generated uh, C sharp class uh, from the proto file. <clears throat> so we use the grpc dot tools to uh, generate this file, and that's the reason we have added the NuGet package. Inside this, we have to uh, implement this method. We can override this uh, method. So here, it's going to execute some code here. So whatever. Uh, notification task we have to do we can do here console dot right line I'm just placing just to notification send so what is the notification sending task maybe we are sending as an email or a message or somewhere so that task you have to do here So here we have to write the code here and we can go and return the response. So new uh, notification reply. Where we can return success equal to true okay since uh, this is a task base so as you see here in the greater service we are returning it as a task so <coughs> we can return it as a task based service so we can also use the same task dot from result and then we can this. So it's now your responsibility to go and implement the code for sending the notification here and then we are returning a success status code as a result. So our service implementation is, uh, service class implementation is done. Now we need to go to the program.cs and here we have to register the service as you see we have the greater service registered here we have now replace it with um, notifier notification service so greater service i have removed because i don't want to use the greater service so i can remove that from here the class is removed the proto file is removed and also we have to remove it from uh, the item group so you can see it's automatically removed so now let's rebuild the project and see is there any error as you can see there is no error and so that we can run the project so when I run this project, you can see in the <coughs> output, it's compiling this project and you can see the project is started on this port number. So there is an HTTP uh, listening port and HTTPS listening port. So we have done with the notification service, server creation where we have a notification GR, uh, notification service which is a grpc service that is used to send the notification to um, other services or other uh, users so now how we can make a call to this from our client application so i said 
this is a grpc application for sending the notification and i want to send the notification whenever a new product is added into the database so i am going to create a, a web api application which is going to add a product into the database and when the product is successfully added into the database and i, I want to send the notification so that i can call the grpc service so inside the demos folder i'm creating a catalog service yes i'm going to make it as a .NET 6 project So here we can see uh, we whenever we create a web API project we will get the default controller that is weather forecast controller and the model that is weather forecast model. I am going to remove both. So let us remove this and also the controller. And I want to add a model class for product. Add a new folder first, which is models. And inside of this models, I'm going to add a new class. And class name is product and here I am going to add some members like a public int id that will set name and add also description public double price Public int quantity. So the, this is enough for the demo purpose. So this is my product class, and I need to create a controller that is going to add the product into the database. I'm not implementing the database since it is a demo demonstration. I'm just creating an API controller which is going to be the product controller and inside this controller I want to create a get method and this is just a returns the list of products And inside this method, I'm just uh, returning some dummy data. So just an empty uh, list I'm sending. So new list of product. So that's it. So this is just a demo. And I'm going to create a post method. And this post method is used to add a new product. And what I'm going to do here, I'm, I'm not implementing the database coding here, just saying add a code to add new product to database. And here is the 
code to send notification and we have to finally return the created action so this is what we have to implement so i'm going to implement only this part that is sending the notification for that <coughs> First of all, we since this is acting as a client application, we have to install some NuGet packages. The first uh, package we are going to install is the grpc.tools because here also we need the proto file and we need to get the implementation of that service next is grpc.net.client because this is a client application we, have, we need to install the client okay now we need to create the protos file so I'm adding a folder on the protos. So if you are creating the proto files into one shared library, then that is better. But since here I'm just adding them independently in every project. So let's add a notifier dot proto and i'm keeping the namespace just a project name and the rest of the things i can copy it from the other project because it is going to be the same so the package name and the service implementation are all going to be same so i can just uh, keep the same thing save this and inside of this we have to add a reference to the proto file so we can just uh, take it from this project but the difference comes here it is not going to be a server it is going to be a client See here, we have the notifier.proto in the protos folder, but here it is going to be a client service. So we can now build this project. Let's see, there is one error. Okay, so we also need to import or install this namespace which we have missed. So let's install that. The google.protobuff is also need to be installed. Now you can see the build process is succeeded and now we can go back to the controller and here we have to implement the code for sending the notification. So we have to first create a grpc channel equal to channel services. So here we have to first uh, install or import the namespace grpc 
dot net dot client which is providing the grpc channel service so use this code as you see here the grpc channel dot four address and then here we have to specify the address of our grpc service so my grpc service is running on this address 7166 which is the http address so i can say 7166 so it's going to create a grpc channel using the grpc channel i am creating a notifier client so i can say new notifier dot notifier client so instead of notifier base uh, this is creating a notifier client because we have uh, mentioned uh, uh, the uh, service type here as client and then we have to send a notification request so i am creating a request object here which is a notification request since receivers is a collection type so i am going just mentioning the add I am using the add method to add a, a list of receivers. So I am just saying uh, all for representing all receivers. And then I can uh, also add a message to the request. So because the request contains two members, receivers list and the message. So message is going to be the product object information. So I am serializing that as a JSON and adding as a string message here. And now we can invoke the notify method. So client dot notify async. Since it is an uh, asynchronous method is invoked, I can call this method from an async task based method. So now you can see the error is gone. So we are calling the notify async method using the grpc client and sending the request which is returning the reply. So the reply should contain success, true or false. Okay. And we are just uh, printing that uh, reply message success value, whether it is true or false on this console. Now we can test this uh, method. So for that, we have to run the server first. So if you see, this is our server, which is already running in this port number and to check whether this is actually executing i am going to apply a breakpoint here and this is the server notify notify method is implemented here and in the client application which is the uh, catalog service in the controller i am going to apply a breakpoint here as well which is going to uh, add the product to the database and then invoking the grpc service so let's run this this is a web api project So you can see the web api swagger page is open and i'm going to add a new product let's try it out the id is not necessary so i'll just uh, provide the product name as maybe apple description is sample product. then price is 250 and the quantity as 10. when i click on the execute we can see the controllers add method is executing and let's go line by line we can see here it's executing the service skip to that line and here you can see it is now hitting the grpc service 
and here it is executing the console dot write line notification send and it is returning a success equal to true response let's continue and if i come back here we have uh, completed this operation so now if you see the uh, uh, web api controller has invoked the uh, the, the uh, grpc service that is the notifier service and invoked the notify method and we have seen that it is hitting the grpc service implementation method so here this is just a demonstration which shows how the services are communicating using grpc uh, in a microservices application you can uh, use this to implement uh, the communication between service between the services and it is one of the fastest and easiest way to implement the communication between the services so that's it from my side, thank you.